because it was interesting. Um, I normally haven't took too many threes like that this year, and I hadn't had a rhythm for various reasons in the game, but in the practice, I was shooting well. So, um, first handoff with Looney. As soon as I let it go, I knew it was good. And then I knew it really was guarding. We had been playing off all night. I knew the opportunity would be there at some point and just took advantage of it. What kind of happened on that technical from your vantage point? Yeah, I think it was just a misinterpretation with the ref because uh, he, I don't know, he, he explained that he thought I had a particular gesture towards his partner, and it was so far from that, it wasn't even close to that. So uh, hopefully uh, I can talk to somebody in the league and they'll send my fine money back. Uh, but I'm on that. Thanks, sir. You've talked some about how <laughs> underrated he is. In the Phoenix game and replacing Wiggins at the three tonight, he's in place of Draymond. You can look at his box score. Mm-hmm. Um, what has he given you this year? Well, I mean, he's a player who has the correct contract was given to him, but the perception of the contract and the situation that he was in, it hurt his value and it hurt kind of the way he was viewed across the league. But when you play with him, and, and it happens from time to time in the league, where a guy is just, I don't know what words to use, he's just wilting away in the wrong organization. And I say anything bad about Washington, I don't know whose fault it was, I'm not blaming anybody, but he can really play basketball at a high level in his mind. He had eight assists tonight, you know, and it's not like, it wasn't like a fluke. Made the right reads, made the singles, and those are the things we're looking for. You know, especially guys coming off the bench or coming in the game. Like, we all know Steph and Draymond are two guys that can have all the turnovers. And we can't have that many turnovers. He's done a great job of taking care of the ball, but making the right plays. And in a post, no one's known that he's had a post game like this. I was going on the, our scrimmage the other day. He scored a few buckets on me in the post, and he's legit 6'10". And he's shooting 40% clip from three for his career. And um, I don't know, I keep giving him a lot of credit, but Jacob Rubin, was talking to me about Otto this summer. And, you know, his body of work hasn't been enough. Uh, he hasn't been in the right situations to really show himself. And Jacob had been pushing him for a long time. And I think two days in, I was like, oh, wow. Like, he's got it. So he's one of those guys that's going to continue to play big and then have important minutes for us. You mentioned the scrimmage. Clay was in the scrimmage. First mm-hmm. time you played with him. Uh, what do you think? How do you look? I mean, um, Alan Iverson used to always joke that uh, Maurice Cheeks had a, a doc eye. He was only passed to, <laughs> to Dr. J. And in the scrimmage, I, I kept passing it to Clay. But that wasn't like on purpose. And it, like the fifth, sixth time, I'm like, I'm not trying to pass to him. And I just keep finding him. He just keeps scoring. And Wiggs and I were talking about it after the game. I'm like, I, I kept getting assists from him, but I wasn't looking for him. He was like, bro, he doesn't dribble. I'm like, you know what, it's going to open up. For other guys, and he was like, it's just, it's just crazy, but we got to get through the bumps in the road because that comes with anything that you do in life, and there's going to be some bumps. So we got to just fight through those and keep ourselves at a steady level with our minds. And, you know, because you can win a lot of games in the regular season and then you can blow it in the playoffs. So we just got to keep focusing on not just winning the game, but playing at a high level every single night. And even if we lose, I'd rather lose at a high level than win a bad game. So we just got to keep playing high level basketball. There's a, it's always felt very far off to play, and you guys have actually purposely kind of try to push it, you know, in the future. But it, it obviously feels very close now. Mm-hmm. He's scrimmaging with you. Are you gaining anticipation for it? Um, I've told myself to like not have that too much anticipation because everyone was, you know, reporting different things, and you know, you don't know that the toll it takes on a person trying to get back. And you're hearing so much about yourself. Like, even if he's not looking for it, it's, it's just so much news. It's going to enter your you know, your little bubble or whatever you try to do to stay away from him. It's going to seep in. And I've tried to not do that with him with our interaction. You know, I've always tried to, you know, keep helping him push for it from that day. Because so you can have some bad days because it's really tough not playing for two years. You're so close. And it's just like some days it's just like, world's going to close it in on you because you've just been doing this for so long and you haven't touched the floor. So I think he's done an incredible job uh, with the balance, uh, understanding the process of getting back 
Uh, he's been doing a hell of a job. Uh, this, this, you know, this go around with the rehab, what, what happened at the first time. And uh, I know he's excited, but the scrimmage was a good thing because he wasn't rushing, wasn't trying to do too much. And, you know, he's getting the, you know, I'm there. I'm looking out for him and making the game easy. He's making the game easy for other guys. So just come on. What have you thought about Luca Vaughn's done for you guys this season? Does he look as healthy as he's ever looked to you? Yeah, he's kind of um, he's taking this approach off the court that, you know, like basketball has kind of taken over, you know, his lifestyle in terms of getting healthy. Like he does yoga, he does uh, Pilates, uh, he's meditating, you know, he's, you know, figuring out his diet. He has this interesting diet. Uh, with his body that he's trying to figure out. He's like one of one on earth with his, how his stomach works. So uh, he's, he's the, the prototype for how you try to get the most out of your career as an NBA professional and doing all the things off the court that will help you on the court. And um, he's, he's just truly dedicated. People forget he's only 26 years old, been in the NBA for seven years. Uh, you know, he has the perception that he's 33 because he's just, you know, he's, he's a grown man, but he's still so young and he's going to play many more years. He's another guy similar to myself where the, you don't see the value on the stat sheet. But what he does, obviously Steve has spoken to, uh, towards his, you know, his his, his love for Loon the last two years. And like, yo, Looney's doing so much, you just don't see it. And smart basketball minds see the value from him. Monty, anything on uh, Zoom? Monty? Yeah, Andre, in that fourth quarter, you guys were plus 12 over them after they kicked you guys in the butt in the third quarter. What was more impressive to you, the physical stuff you guys did or the mental approach you guys took given the conditions? Well, it was interesting because he spoke to it at halftime. Like, listen, every time we get a big lead on this team, uh, historically, they get right back in in the third. So he's like, I'm not going to come in here and be all cool and calm and say you're doing a great job. Like, wake up. Like, third starter thirds will be important. And uh, they're a really good team. You know, they're just third in the West for a reason. Uh, you know, they're trying to get better and better every year, keep making, you know, strides each and every year. So um, it's a testament to them that they came back like the way they did. But it's really it says something about who we are in terms of the last two weeks have been so crazy for us, guys in, guys out. Like, God missed two games, come right back quick. Jordan Poole's stuck in Boston for 10 days, and he's another guy was only stuck for four days and just juggling with the uh, roster and guys being ready to go. And uh, a great response from that uh, Denver game. So uh, that mental aspect is, is more important. Great.